right. Welcome everybody to our two o'clock weekly spotlight um, class. Um, hello, <laughs> Ziegler. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second, you guys. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna just spend a few minutes just kind of chit-chatting. Um, let's give some people some a chance to, to sign in and join us. Um, I'd like to go over our supplies for you, okay? So it's a little different than the class that we just had. Um, you're gonna need paper. Now, if you're lucky enough to have watercolor paper, that's amazing. This will be a great project for that. But if you don't, you just want a heavier paper. So you don't want copier paper that's gonna be way too thin, something a little heavier. Um, cardstock could definitely be fine. This is a heavyweight drawing paper I'm gonna be using today. Um, you're gonna need a pencil. Now I'm just gonna use a regular number two pencil for you guys, okay? One, because it draws really dark lines. And I want you to be able to see my lines, but I don't want you to draw as darkly as I'm going to. And I will repeat that more and more as, as I'm drawing. Um, remember to practice your whisper drawing. We want really light lines, but unfortunately you can't see that very well. So I have to draw a little darker, okay? But I'll continue to talk to you guys about that. You'll need an eraser. I highly recommend if you guys have one of these high Palmer, these white erasers. I have a brand new one today. I do love new eraser day. Um, I highly recommend a good eraser. I purposefully take all the erasers off the bottom of my, um, my pencils when, when I'm teaching class because I don't want kids to use those erasers. They're just not made for art, okay? Um, your watercolors, watercolor palette. Here's my beloved and used very much palette. Um, I got some mess up yellow there. That's all right, we'll clean it up. So yours might be bigger. You might have more colors than I, which way, that's super exciting. You might have less colors and that's absolutely okay. Your project's still gonna be beautiful, okay? So we need our watercolor. Um, we need our water. I love the dog bowl method, okay? So this gives you clean water on one side. And then, I, and then I put a sponge over here where it says rinse. I have it written down on all my bowls. I place them down in a table. Um, and this sponge helps you wipe off your brush when it's dirty. And it keeps your painting water nice and clean. So I highly recommend this for you guys. Just invest in one. Go to the Dollar Tree, the dollar store. They're only a couple dollars. They're almost, it's almost impossible for the kids or even yourself to knock this over. Um, and also I, I do as an adult notice that if I paint with just a cup of water and then I also have like a cup of coffee, I, I tend to accidentally dip my paintbrush into my coffee. So this really helps me with that. Um, all right, so it's pretty simple supplies that we need for today. Um, Right here, we're going to do a shout out to our awesome, awesome sponsors for this year, our 50th anniversary year. Ziggler's really excited about that. Mr. Richard Boister, um, the Home Bank, Safe Haven Enterprises, and Bubba Ocelet. Thank you so much. Um, we could not do our programming without you. So whenever you can, go out and support those people so that you can, they can continue to support us. And it works out for everybody. So, um, all right. So this week... We have Portrait of a Young Girl with a Rose by Julian Hudson. He is a Louisiana-born artist, um, straight out of New Orleans in the 19th century. So he was born in 1811. Um, <clears throat> let's see. He continued, he worked mostly in, in New Orleans. He continued to work in New Orleans until his death in 1844. Um, and he may have been the first black artist in the South and the second in the country after Joshua Johnston, um, who was from 1765, who's the earliest known black artist in the United States. So he's a wonderful, wonderful artist. He has a wonderful story. If you can do some research on him, look it up. He, um, the, the troubles and the things he had to overcome to be accepted into the art world is, is something really amazing. So. But when I look at this picture for our classes today, I'm really drawn to this rose. And he did that. You can tell this is the only place that the pink is and that pink really draws me in. So I'm concentrating, I'm going to be inspired by his beautiful pink rose. Um, so we're gonna do some close-up flowers. Now, when I think of close-up flowers, the artist that comes to mind for me and probably most Americans is Georgia O'Keeffe. And here we have one of her poppies. <coughs> Georgia O'Keeffe was born in Wisconsin, 
1887, but she spent a lot of her years in the New Mexico area. She is best known for her close-up big flowers, her New Mexican landscapes, and her New York skyscrapers. So she did spend a lot of time in New York and was really inspired by the buildings there. Um, <clears throat> she has been recognized as the mother of, of modern, I'm sorry, excuse me, of American modernism. Um, which is, you know, a fancy word for saying that she was one of the firsts in this movement. She loves bold, big colors. Um, one of my very favorite quotes by Georgia O'Keeffe. Actually, I'm going to switch over right now to these. I love, oh, I keep putting it upside down. Um, I love these pictures. If you notice, she's, she gets real close to these flowers and all her petals go off of the page. They did the same with the poppy here all the way off the page. Um, so one of her, one of my favorite quotes of hers that I found says, I found I could say things with color and shapes that I couldn't say any other way. Things I had no words for. Um, that's been one of my favorite quotes for a long time. It was one of the first quotes I saw from her when I was a child in art class. I, my, my teacher had a poster in her room um, of Georgia O'Keeffe and it had that quote and I really love it. I love the, the meaning behind that. So, and then I found a couple cool facts about Georgia that I really want to share with you guys. So the first one, her favorite place to paint was her car. <laughs> O'Keefe drove a customized Model A Ford with detachable front seats. So she would turn the passenger seat to face the back seat and she'd use the back seat to prop up her canvases and paint. So the car, she said the car protected her from bees in the unrelenting desert sun of New Mexico. Which I love. I just, I, I love that. Um, Gotta get creative. Another one, O'Keefe never stopped creating, okay? As she grew older, she began to lose her central vision. So she started going blind in the center of her eyes. Um, but she still continued to paint after completing her last unassisted piece. Once she got to the point where she needed assistance, she did ask her assistants to mix her oil paints um, and to prepare her canvases. But even after she went completely blind, O'Keefe still created. She took up sculpting, watercolor with the help from our friend and she also worked with um, chalk pastels charcoals and pencil until she was 96 years old so she created until she was 96 she passed away at 99. Um, O'Keefe is one of America's most celebrated icons so she was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom which is the greatest civilian honor in the United States and the National Medal of Arts and the U.S. Postal Service honored her by issuing a 32 cent stamp of this painting the red poppies so back when stamps were 32 cents, I don't know what they are now, but mm -hmm. so what I want you to kind of look at with these pictures is how close they are. And with my younger kids and with you, this is what I'm going to tell you to do. Today, we're going to imagine ourselves as teeny tiny little insects. I'm going to pick a bumblebee. Bumblebees are really in right now. We all have to save the bees, right? So we're going to pretend like we're this little bitty bumblebee and we're going to draw the flower from the view of the bumblebee. So we're going to draw big. And, and we're gonna go way off the page. Um, so make sure you have a covering on your table. All right, so I'm gonna get my paper. But as, um, as we do this, I wanna remind you guys about our weekly drawing. Okay, hold on, let me find a piece of paper that's not already got some color on it. Um, we do a drawing every week for art supplies. So last week, um, Ms. Jade, one for her nephew. He did a beautiful picture of a folk art chicken last week. Um, he got himself a, a water bowl just like this, a palette just like this, some oil pastels, and a brand new brush. So he was all ready for us this week. Um, go ahead. It's very easy to enter. You guys just need to ask some questions, like and share our posts for that have to do with our spotlight. Um, Get involved, make something, share a picture of what you create, what, whatever you're inspired to do this week, and we'll get your name in that drawing. We do the drawing at 2 o'clock on Mondays, um, so stay tuned for that. All right. Don't forget, if you're here with us, to give us a, a, a thumbs up. Um, go ahead and share our post so your friends can see it and they can join us if they like. And remember, if you're not watching live, that's absolutely okay. Our videos are always available. Um, you can still interact with us on those posts. We look at all of them and we answer all questions. Um, so just let us know that you're there, okay? All right, so let's talk about what we're doing this today. 
So here's a couple examples that we did of some close-up flowers. And the first thing I, we're gonna start with is the center of the flower. And I want you to notice here that none of the centers of these flowers are perfect circles, okay? A lot of people have problems doing paint perfect circles. Um, in Renaissance times, if you could draw a perfect circle freehand, you were like the piece de resistance, right? <laughs> like it was a big deal. Um, but here's my trick. If you don't, if you don't trust yourself, well one, in nature, not a lot of flowers have the perfectly round. Some do, but not all of them. Um, I purposely make it misshapen so that it doesn't look like I made a mistake. I did this on purpose, and I did. I didn't want it to be a circle. So you're going to do a little smaller than your fist. I have a really big hand, so I'm going to do a little smaller than your fist. And you get to decide where you want to put the center. Okay, so this, this one, I have a dead center. Oh, and you also notice that this is a different size paper. This is to show you, you can do this project on absolutely any size paper. There is no right or wrong way. Okay, most of these, this one was in the center, it's offside. I think I'm gonna do a little off-centered today. And I wanna go off-centered so that I have one full petal and I'll show you that when we do it, okay? So, with your pencil, now remember, you're gonna try to draw much lighter than I'm doing. You're gonna sketch or whisper, whisper drawing. Barely put that pencil on the paper. But I'm gonna draw it much darker, okay? So that you guys can be sure to see it against, um, on the film. And I'm gonna pick, I think, right about here. I'm just gonna start and make a roundish shape. Just like that. Super easy, okay? All right, so now we're gonna make our lines, make our marks for our petals. And this is a, 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 a nice little cheat for you. What you do is you just make little lines about, well, oh, two inches apart, unless you want little tiny petals, you can certainly make them closer. So each of these lines it's gonna kind of look like a sun right now, a funny shaped sun. We're just gonna try to be even. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to measure it. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. It's okay to have a big, one big petal and some small petals, that's fine. So, when we draw this flower, now that we're, I'm gonna, excuse me a second, I'm gonna move my, my water out of our way. We don't need this right now. We're going to draw the entire petal, even if the petal doesn't stay on our paper. So for just a moment, we're gonna pretend like the entire table is our paper. So you should definitely have something covering your paper. Don't draw on your, on your parents' table, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start, we're gonna start this first line. You guys pick which line you want. And I'm gonna draw a big petal. I did just big round ones in our last one, and those are super simple. If you wanna do them super simple like that, please do but you don't have to. I'm gonna show you something different. I'm gonna just do some wavy, crazy lines, similar to this, okay? So I'm gonna start, and just gonna kinda of move my pencil. Remember, I'm drawing really dark so you guys can see it. I drew all the way off the paper, and I'm gonna come right back and connect right there to that line, okay? So you draw. I drew all the way off the paper. So now I'm gonna start again to the next one. I'm gonna start this line, and I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna do some wiggling. I'm gonna go all the way off my paper. I'm gonna come back around, some more wiggling, and connect right there. So here I wanna show you how to overlap your petals so that it looks like one petal is underneath another. Instead of coming all the way down here to start my line, I think I'm gonna come way up here and start it like that. And I'm gonna keep, but I'm gonna come back around and match up right there. And that's all right, I'll, I might erase that a little bit. I went over a little. Now, when you're drawing, you will probably more likely do a stroke like this, okay? Because it's a little less dark, it's easier to, to get a little line. I'm just doing solid big lines. And even if you do the solid big lines, it won't be the end of the world. It'd just be harder to erase. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna show you that overlap again. I'm gonna start up here and do some wiggly shapes. And I'm actually gonna come back up, there we go. Just like that. And every line, Oh, see that, that one met way over out there. I'm gonna have a lot of overlapping right here. It looks like I've made these lines a little closer together, but I am totally okay with that. This one I might start in right here. And the thing to be, to just really remember is that you want the outside of your petal out here, that's far away from your center, to be wider than your bottom. Okay, so it's gonna get wider out there. This is gonna be another overlapped one. All right, 
I'm going to overlap this one as well. My line is way back here, but I drew a really wiggly line there. So I'm going to come all the way up here. I'm going to go all the way to the edge of my paper. And remember, I wanted to have one, at least one petal that was all the way on. And that one, that's going to be it. And I'm going to do one more. I'll go ahead and overlap this one too. Fill up this section and erase that line. I went into my other petal. And there we go. So now we really don't know what this flower is going to look like until you pick it up off the paper. And you can see that we've got that huge flower, but we left half of it down there on the paper on the, on the table. So there you go. An easy close-up flower. Now it's time to start painting. And today as we're painting, um, I may not actually be able to finish this entire picture with you today, um, but I'm going to show you all the steps because it, it's a little more time consuming. I want us to concentrate on highlighting and shadowing our um, petals. This is gonna give them a very three-dimensional look, okay? So when you look at something, one, if you notice, on all of these petals, this side, this left side of the petal on this side, there it's all this light pink, and I've got the darker purple running on the other side. And I'm gonna show you how we do that. So. It's time to get our watercolors going. Go ahead and finish up your flower. If you um, had to erase any lines, it, you might be a little behind me, but that's okay. Once this is no longer live, you can certainly pause me um, or fast forward if you need to. All right, so now it's time to choose some colors. I think I'm gonna go with yellows and oranges, maybe just oranges, and I think I'll use yellow for highlighting. I'm gonna clean that up real quick. Did you guys see that orange I had on there? All I did was add some water and bam, now it's clean. That happens. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> I'm looking for four colors. It, now, if you have a palette that only has eight colors, you might not be able to do this as well. You'll have to really work on getting, using more paint to make it darker and less paint to make it lighter. But if you have enough where you can find four similar colors, let's bring out the the color wheel. All right. You can get crazy and wild with your with your flower if you want to. You can absolutely you can do every petal a pet, every petal a different color if you want to. But for this project especially, we're going to talk about colors that I call them friends. These are friendly colors, colors that are next to each other on this color wheel. Okay. Um, these are our big primary colors, right? Red, blue, and yellow. You mix those colors to get all the colors in between. So I'm gonna look on here and I think I'm gonna stick with these four colors. You see this nice orange, an orangey yellow, a bright yellow, and a reddish orange, okay? So while we're painting the petal the first time, because we're gonna do it twice, the first time I'm gonna use the two middle colors, okay? So if you're over here, if you want a green and blue one, you would use the two middle colors. So look on your color wheel if you have one available. If not, look on Google, just look it up real quick. Um, or if you know it in your head. If you don't have one, creating a color wheel is important. That might be something we need to put on the list to do, how to create a color wheel. Um, so if you guys want us to do that one day, let us know. Go ahead and comment. Don't forget to ask questions. Um, do we have anybody live I should be make a shout out to? Everybody? So. People are in and out. Okay. All right, so we're gonna use these four colors right here for our petals. And I'm gonna start with the medium colors. So I'm gonna look for an orangey yellow and an orange. So here are the colors I have to work on with. And I'm going to definitely use this for my highlight color, but for my two that I'm gonna use, maybe this peachy color, I actually kinda like that peachy color. And let's see, maybe this orange. This looks like a pretty basic orange right here. So these are the two colors I'm gonna start with and I use my water, clean water each time to wake it up so my paint is ready for me, right? And here we go. When your paint, because we're going to specifically be doing highlighting and shadowing of your petal, um, I use, or I'm, I'm choosing two colors just to give it more interest and to show you some mixing of it. So I'm gonna pick up my light color first I'm not gonna worry about where my shadows and my highlights are right now because right now I'm just painting my petal. 
remember we used pencil we didn't use crayon we didn't use oil pastel so we have to be a little careful about where our water goes there's no um, levy of color to hold our waters in so I'm gonna pick up some more water and some more color I started with a lighter color and I think as I go as my paint is still wet I can really mix them together and you want to be nice and slow around your edges all right so you remember when you're painting in an object you paint slow around the edge and then you can be a little faster on the inside so and I'm gonna just pick up some more color I picked up some more of that orange color to darken it a bit and if you notice see that that means I don't have enough water usually when someone in my class is having a hard time with watercolor, the response I have is pick up more water, okay? So don't be afraid to play with the water. One, it's just water. If it's too much, walk away from it, let it dry for a minute, and then you can come back. Um, but if you notice the different amounts of water, the, wa the paint moves differently on your paper, right? And it's watercolor, so we want lots of water. painted some of the dark and now I'm going over with that light orange and I'm going to paint the whole thing and again we're not worrying about highlights and shadow yet we're gonna all add that in later all right there might be times where I get a little quiet I'll try to keep you entertained <laughs> Um, let's see, I do, let us know if, you know, I spend a lot of time at night watching other people do art videos. It's something very calming to me to watch somebody put a paintbrush to paper or canvas or an oil pastel to paper. Um, so you might just be watching just to watch us and, and that is absolutely okay. Hello, go, but if you do go ahead and say hello to us, we can say hi to you. All right. Now, if you are using especially if you're using watercolor paper you're gonna want to skip and do every other petal because what happens is if your water if your paint right here is wet and I try to come up with another wet color right here they're gonna bleed together and I don't want that to happen so I'm gonna skip the petal and come on to the next one and I picked up some of that orange so I'm just using those two different oranges. Very, it's really very random. Um, just until I get a, a look that I like. Don't forget to wipe off the paint on your sponge so that your water stays nice and clean, okay? Now, if you have two colors that are not as close together, like if you notice my colors, they're not very different. One's just slightly brighter. But if you have these, what I call harsh lines, where if you look right here, if you kind of look closely, you can tell where my color was, right? Those are, that's where my color changed. So to fix that, I wash my brush off. I pick up just some clean water and I just rub clean water on it. And it just kind of softens that line so it doesn't look so harsh. See that? So don't beat yourself up too bad if you guys get out of the line. I'm sure at some point I will paint out of the line on this and I'll show you kind of how you can almost erase it. I love watercolor. It's mm -hmm. so easy. Um, so don't be too hard on yourself. Just get your petal painted. This is about having fun. And it's a great way. The good thing about watercolor and this paper, especially this, just this thicker drawing paper, is it's not really very expensive. So it's certainly okay for you to try and try again. And just to remember that if you mess up, it's just paper. It's just paper and water and maybe a half a cent worth of paint. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm moving my paper around and it's easier for me, guys. Some of you might not like to move your paper around, but I do. And again, I'm gonna skip that petal so that my colors don't blend together. All right. So while we're doing this, because we're doing the same thing for a minute, I want to talk to you guys about something that um, our fantastic director, Ms. Tisha, has started this week. And it's the question of the day. Mm -hmm. 
and where did that go, Miss Tisha? Where did I put that? Oh, here it is. And um, so we're going to ask you guys a question, and it's really of the week. You can answer this anytime you want. Even if it's weeks later, please mm -hmm. answer it. We'd love to hear your answers. Mm -hmm. So our question today is, if you could be really big or really small, which would you choose and why? So we, I answered this question earlier and I said that I would want to be really small. Um, you'd probably see all of our flowers would look like this. It would be amazing. But I really love fairies. I loved them growing up. I, I know where the fairies live. If there's water and there's plants, trust me, there's fairies there. Um, so I've always loved fairies throughout my life. So I think it would be really cool to be small and be able to see the light as, um, as a fairy. But Bailey, who is mm -hmm. here painting, I know you can't see her, but she's here painting with me, um, had a different answer. Bailey, you want to tell them your answer to that question? Sure. I love fairies too, but I also love giants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the big friendly giant? <gasps> I have. Oh my goodness. That's one of my favorite movies. I remember seeing the animated one growing up. Yes. And I always loved the land of the giants oh. and how he just jumped through the portal and it was so colorful and beautiful, but he was just tiptoeing around buildings and leaping over. Can you imagine being city. able to leap over a city? You so could go anywhere cool. in the world in minutes. That might be a good idea. So we'd love to hear parents. If you guys could ask your kids that question, we'd love to hear their responses. Um, We'd love to compile a bunch of responses and, and maybe if you guys would let us share them with our um, yeah. with our followers and our watchers, that would be great. So you notice I kind of painted outside of the line there. I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm going to leave it for now. Um, like I said, don't be hard on yourself. Just do your best. Well, Miss Jessica, maybe some people just love being the size that they are. Well, that's true. They might not want to be big or small. I could, and, and maybe they have a good reason for that. Right. I'd love to hear that. Mm -hmm. You need those answers. That'd be great. Like Goldilocks. Maybe they're just right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love Goldilocks? All right. So you should still be painting your petals. Moving along. And again, I am mixing two colors here. But even if you, if you wanted to just paint one color, you could. Like I said, my colors are very similar. It's almost hard to even tell them apart. But it gives a little dimension, a little, little excitement differences in there. Oops. All right, so I'm gonna do this one. And because they don't touch too much, I should be able to, oh no, I gotta finish the other ones. So this will be the time this will take some of you longer and some of you um, a less amount of time. Some of you like to paint fast and that is okay. But remember to be slow along your lines and then you can speed up on the inside. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna move the paint around on the paper. I love watching watercolor move on the paper. This peach is really light. I'm gonna try to pick up a lot of paint. really swirl it around there. If you're finding you're not getting enough um, of a strong color, that just means you're not picking up enough pigment. And that's just that pigment is a fancy word for this dried paint right here. Um, so just swirl your brush around there and get some more color, some more color on it. But if your color is too dark, unlike with acrylics and like washable Crayola paints, where you add white to get a lighter color for watercolors, you just add water. You know, we were talking about um, New Mexico with Georgia O'Keeffe. My orange and, and peach is kind of reminding me of New Mexico and all the colors of the desert there. And the sunset. Yeah. Oops. Oh, I got a little dirty paint, dirty water into my clean water. But because I've mostly kept it clean, it shouldn't be much of a problem for me. Now, if you don't have a two-sided water bowl, 
and you don't have a place to wipe your brush, then your water is probably getting pretty dirty. And before we do our highlights and our um, our shadowing, we'll call it shadowing today, then you'll want to uh, change your water out and get some clean water. All right, so I'm just gonna pick up some just water right here and trying to smooth some of these lines out. If you see that on my paper, you can kind of see the lines. I'm just gonna add water and just move that paint around a little more evenly. And I actually think I'm gonna do that down here too. So it'll blend my orange and my peach down here. tried to paint this petal while that first petal was still wet my bright orange would bleed right into that other petal and you wouldn't really be able to you know I mean it would still be okay and it still happens but this is a good way to kind of prevent that bleeding is to to not paint things that are right next to each other and if you have watercolor paper you'll probably have to wait even longer you have to be really patient with watercolor paper um, which is why for my younger kids, I like to use the crayons and the oil pastels because they, they work as like a levy to keep your color separated. So um, that's something to remember when you're doing art with younger kids. That's why this one's for my older kids. You guys are, are patient enough and um, skilled enough to be able to do that, to skip over and not paint wet next to wet. I get impatient sometimes. I, <laughs> I very much get impatient. I actually have a little fan that I have sitting next to me when I do watercolors at home because Good I have to, to, because I'm so impatient. So I sit there and let the watercolor paint, I mean dry. <laughs> so if you notice, I have a lot of harsh lines right there. So I'm gonna clean my brush, pick up some water and soften all those lines. If you like the harsh lines, leave them. Everybody has different um, different ideas of what looks good on their their flower. Some art studios even have a hair dryer for everyone to use. Yes, yes, <laughs> we have um, some of the. When Miss Angie from Bayou Paint, she, oh, I can't wait for we can till we can start doing that again. But um, she had those wonderful hand dryers for when we were painting with acrylics. <laughs> <clears throat> but thinking about what supplies you're using when you think about that, about how much time you want to spend, sometimes like the craft acrylic that you can find at Walmart for like 50 cents for the, I love that, especially for kids because it dries so quickly. Where artist acrylic takes a little longer, nowhere near as long as oils. Miss Jessica does not have the patience for oils. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am an instant gratification person. <laughs> Oil can take up to Oil can take years. Weeks. weeks. <laughs> right. So, um, so you you really want to think about the supplies you're using for the project that you're trying to get. You know, if you want to spend some time relaxing with, or if you want to be really quick and fast, use different materials. nice and patient around your lines and then you can go much faster in the center of your objects all right and now I'm gonna pick up some just water again and smooth out my colors blend them in all right oh we're getting there so um, I also want you to remind you not to judge your artwork in the middle of the project, okay? You might look at it and be like, this is not going to look anything like I want it to look like. What I want you to do is to stop and to trust the, trust the method, trust yourself a little more than you do, and just keep going with it, okay? Because this, you might be thinking, this flower, it's so flat and I can't even tell it's three-dimensional. Well, we, we're not done yet. So remember that. Uh-oh. I went over into the other puddle. I mean, puddle. Puddle. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not mad about it. All right. 
So, did I talk about the drawing with you guys already? I think maybe I did. So make sure you guys share your finished work with you with us and let us see that. Um, share the post with your friends so that they can join around, along if they'd like to. Um, comment, ask a question. Um, just, it's pretty easy to get in on this. Uh, answer supplies. the question of the week. Answer the question of the week, absolutely. Don't forget that. Um, and it'll give you a chance to, to earn some of the supplies that I use here in classes. So you would really be all set for most of our classes. I do try to stick with materials that I know a lot of you kids will probably have at home. Um, but I wouldn't mind knowing if you guys wanted to do things that were maybe with acrylic or, or um, tempera, like a washable paint, if you guys have something. So let me know what kind of supplies you guys have at home. It helps me decide what to do with you guys. I wanna make sure you guys can have art projects that go with the supplies that you use and you have at home. So if you have any requests like that, let me know. Um, ooh, one more petal. So if you notice, because we're not using, I'm not using watercolor paper, this has dried really um, all on top of it right now, but it's pretty dry. really impatient right there, huh? Look what she did. That's all right. <laughs> Good thing that other petal is the same orange, huh? Okay. Right. So now I'm just going to add some clear water to this petal this clean water and blend those colors together and there we have it we have colored in if you find any spots that aren't quite how you like it you can go around and change those now all right so now <clears throat> we've got some petals some colored petals and if you use the two colors you already have a lot of dimension and interest in them so now let's talk about highlighting. Highlighting it's like the opposite of shadow and I don't know why I like to do it first um, but I do. It might have to do with the fact that it's a light color so it's easier to use your light colors first. So when you think of a highlight it's something that's bright and now I used orange but I'll show you on my other ones. You can see here for this blue and purplish flower I used pink for my highlighting here I used a nice bright yellow. You can almost barely see it, and that's, that's okay, that's kind of the point. And here I used a yellow again here for these highlights. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna look at my flower and I wanna see, is there a petal that is very obviously on top? Remember we did some overlapping? And right here, right here, this petal right here is definitely on top of this petal. So that's gonna help me know that I'm gonna shadow that part because there's something on top of it which means I'm gonna highlight the right edges of the petals. So this is what we have to do. We're gonna pick a color. I'm gonna pick this yellow. I must, I must really love this yellow. I use it a lot, it's almost gone. So I'm gonna wake up my yellow and that's a nice bright color. And remember, you wanna use a bright color that's friends with the color you used. So close on the, on the um, color wheel. And I have decided to highlight the left side of my petals. So I'm going to take my yellow on my brush and I'm going to just run it from the inside, just a line of yellow all the way up and around, just like that, okay? Now, as you can see, I have a harsh line there. So how are we gonna fix that? I'm gonna clean my brush off. I'm gonna pick up some clean water and I'm just gonna paint some clean water on top of that. Do you see how that starts to blend out that color? Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna keep going. Now because my color where I'm painting next 
God. I highlighted the wrong side, you guys. All right, look at what Miss Jessica did. I need to shadow that side. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some water and try to really blend out that highlight I just did. <laughs> We're going to leave that petal alone and move on to the next. And I'll show you. It'll be fine. Once I put the shadow on that, you won't see that. Okay, <laughs> rewind. <laughs> I want to highlight the, the right side of my petals. So again, I'm gonna start here at the base. I'm nice, you can see all that color on there. Water and color. I'm just gonna do a nice line all around the right, this side. So now you may have chosen to do the other side of your petal, that's fine. As long as you do the same side on every petal. So again, heart, a little bit of a harsh line. So I'm gonna wipe that off, pick up some a little bit of clean water and start to just kind of blend that out. Okay. All right. So now you can see how that yellow really pops out. <clears throat> and once we put that shadow in, you're going to really notice a difference. So again, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and paint the very next one because I'm nowhere near where it's wet on that petal. So I'm going to just keep cleaning up. All right. This might be where I should just show you the shadows. We'll just do a few petals, okay? We might not finish all these petals. Now remember, your art doesn't have to be finished in 20 minutes, but it doesn't have to take you all day either. But you can definitely, especially with watercolor, if you are if you want to take a break and you're done painting for a while, but your, your picture's not finished, that's all right. Just set it aside, let it dry, and come back to it whenever you're ready. Have a lot of people and I think that my kids in class they don't they don't realize that it's okay to do that to just put an unfinished piece down walk away for a while and come back all right remember I'm gonna stick to the same side that I've been doing turned into the left side but that's only because the flowers circle all right and then just some clean water to blend that out all right, let's do one more. Let's go fix this one I messed up up here. <laughs> All right. All the way along that line. Now, as we go in the series, we'll talk more and more about lighting and the direction in which light hits an object. Um, that gets definitely more advanced. So right now, I just want to introduce you to the idea of it and what it can do to a picture. All right. So you can already tell that how more detailed and that this these petals look right now that all of these with the highlights. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should just do one more. All right. why I like these nice rounded medium rounded brushes because they have a nice tip you can get in pretty small places but when you push down on the paper you can do large spaces too all right so just water to, to blend that out all right so now I want to show you some shadowing okay we're gonna do on this half of the flower and when I did my, my flower, I did these two colors, right? This peach and this nice bright orange. I think I'm going to use this really reddish orange right here as my shadow. Um, you can definitely use gray if you would like to. That would definitely make it look like a shadow. But right now, I would just want to play with colors to show you that. So we're going to stick with just a darker color. So you want to choose a color that is, again, a friend of the color of your petal, but that is slightly darker. And I'm going to choose this one. Let me pick it up real quick. Wake up, bright orange. It's like a reddish mm -hmm. orange. I like it. Let's see what it does, okay? So, 
I'm going to do the opposite side that I just did all my highlights, right? So if my highlight is on this side, I'm gonna do the shadow on the opposite side. But I'm gonna do it exactly the same way. See all those color on my brush? Lots, lots of water. And here we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way up to the edge right there. Okay, now I'm gonna wash my brush off. Ooh, my sponge is getting dirty, guys. I'm gonna pick up some clean water and I'm gonna um, do the same thing, just blend it out, okay? So that we don't have that harsh line, just blend it out. Um, you might wanna just go ahead and let everybody know that yes, this is um, a lesson that they're enjoying and they later want to maybe share it with someone else. That a, an easy way to find all of our lessons is to go to our YouTube page um, where they're all there and, and you don't have to dig through Facebook to find them. Oh, awesome. Um, See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. You could just go yeah, jump over to our YouTube page. Jump on over to our YouTube page and um, all of the lessons will be right there for you and you can revisit them and uh, redo them oh, for yourself awesome. or with your kids or your grandkids or absolutely share with you anybody yeah even with your cat even with your cat <laughs> absolutely notice here i'm just kind of blending it out but look at that look at what a difference the highlights and the low lights and the shadowing the changing of the color does from your other petals see that Ooh. what a difference i mean that's a big difference and it's just a little bit of color all right so i'm going to keep finishing the ones that i've already done the highlights on and then i'll show you the rest Same process, just a different size of the petal. Oh, I really like that orange. It was a really good choice, I think. I'll do a couple more. Go ahead and if you want to move your paper around, feel free to. So you do want to be careful. I do notice actually that this petal's pretty wet right there. I'm going to skip over that one. Because um, I don't want this red to lead into that yellow on that side. So I may have to let that dry a second. If you're doing your entire flower though, you go all the way around, it should be plenty dry enough by the time you get around. But I'm not gonna. All right, see, I'm just softening up that line. There you go. Now I'm noticing, so this one, I hadn't done the highlight yet. That's where I stopped. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up and do it. All right. All right. Here we go. Look at that. Let's see, this might be all right. I think I'm going to be brave and go ahead and. But the worst case scenario is it's too wet, it bleeds, and I show you why not to do that. Right? Because again, it's just paper. It is starting to soak a little bit into that other petal, but I'm not going to be mad about it. See what happened, guys? I told you it was still a little wet. You see that red bled into there. Should have been more patient. Mm -hmm. But, again, I only did that so I could show you guys why you shouldn't do it. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry my brush off. And a dry, uh, like a damp brush will pick up water. Okay. So that kind of picked that up a bit. Now I'm gonna go over, pick up a little yellow and just try to cover over that. There, you never knew. All right, so there you go. So you can really see how these petals are coming along. Let's do one more shadowy color right here. It's a dark color, not really a shadow. Um, we're just showing the highlights and lowlights what color can do. And friendly colors, colors that like each other you can do this with any color. You can make a green flower. You can make yellow, blue, purple. You just want to use friendly colors. And that just means they're close together on the, on the color wheel. I know a fancy word for that, Miss Jessica. <laughs> Tell us that fancy word. It's called analogous colors. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a fancy word. And that just means that they're all next to each other, but together in an analog way. Okay, so like I said, it would take me, it's gonna take me a little longer to finish these. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and skip ahead to the next part. 
Um, <clears throat> we're going to paint your background. And speaking of yellow colors, now we're gonna look at colors. I used these colors, right? I want an opposite color so that my flower really pops off the paper. If you wanna leave it white, you absolutely can. Um, if you have a lot of space back here and you want to draw a scene back there, something that's happening behind your flower, go ahead and go for it. But I'm going to stick with the opposite color. I think I'm going to pick a blue and I'm going to do blue for my background. So now normally I would finish all my petals first. Okay. Right guys. But I'm, we're going to kind of skip ahead and I'm going to show you a little bit of the background. So background is super easy. I'm going to pick a color, wake it up, wake up blue. Ooh, can you tell how much I love blue? Blue is one of the most used colors. <laughs> I don't have a lot of blues in here anymore. People think blue is a sad color, but I think it's happy. I think it's a, it's a calming, happy color. Um, I mean, it's very important. If you look out there, most of our planet is blue. One, because of our water. And when, when we look at our sky, it's, it's blue to us. And it's a very important color in history. And it's very interesting how humans found the color blue to use in paint. Yeah, um, I, I really do love the history of colors and how they used to make colors. And because they, I mean, humans, you know, a couple hundred years ago, uh oh, I'm not going to worry about that, guys. It just happens. Um, hundreds of years ago, you couldn't go to a Michaels and buy, you know, a palette of paint, you had to make your colors. And it's really interesting the way they used to do that. They had to use things in nature. Yep, they would use rocks. And blue is the rarest naturally occurring color. That's right. That's why it was so hard to paint with. An artist, you, you really, um, some of the really early artists don't have a lot of blue in their color. And because of that, you, you really could make it. If you could afford to get blue colors, then you were something then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Flex. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they found purple. Mm, the royal color. Mm -hmm. And it was and it's known as a royal color because it was so expensive to make. Only royals could really afford to have clothing that was dyed purple and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's all changed now in our life. It, they have synthetic colors and colors are easier for people to to get to. You so, know what's fun though? What? painting with pigments that you do find in nature. Even though you can go out and buy them, I painted with blackberries before. <gasps> really? Yes, and it's a beautiful how that purple go? blue color. How fun. We might have to do a class like that where we go out <laughs> and see what kind of colors we can make from Louisiana stuff. What kind Ooh. of thing? We could definitely make some earth tones, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Tell give myself me just a little bit of space here. So if you have a smaller brush, you can definitely use it. I'm going to just do my best with the brush that I have out. All right. So you kind of get the idea of what, what I'm doing here. I'm just painting a solid color. Um, I'm, you notice how dark it's going on. There's a lot of water and what I'm doing is drying my brush slightly and then picking up that excess, excess water just so that it's more of a light sky color. See that? So when you dry your brush off, it becomes a sponge that soaks up everything on the paper. Not dry, but like damp. So, and again, I'm not gonna be too mad about the non-perfect. I'll show you a good trick if you guys are trying to brush this, or paint this tiny little area with a big brush like me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the center of, your, of my flower. Now, most flowers, you think of like a yellow bright center. In fact, I didn't do yellow on any of mine. I did some hints of yellow. <clears throat> but if you look at the centers of them, you can tell that they're not just one color. If you want to just paint it one color, go for it. You might really like that look. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with a little more variation. And I'm gonna go with variations. I think I'm gonna go real weird. I'm gonna go a little bit of this maroon. I don't know why guys, it's calling to me. I've been painting next to it all day. So, I'm going to start with that. Oh, it's a pretty color. Ooh. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. 
So now I've got that color down. I'm gonna add some more water so it's easier to mix a color with it. Let's go. You almost have a brown, like a reddish pinkish in the center. Almost an opposite of another flower. Remember, if you have any harsh lines that you don't like between your colors, just add some clean water. Nice and slow. We're getting there. Um, let's see what happens. I'm gonna add a little bit of lightness on the side. I'm gonna wash my brush. Now, when your picture is draw, uh, dry, what I did, you don't have to do this. If you love the way it looks and you don't want to, to outline your picture, then you certainly don't have to. It's not a requirement. Um, I like that almost illustrated cartoony look. That's just the kind of art I really am drawn to. I'm not liking how that's mixing, so I'm actually gonna go back to this the pink that I used. that dark and then I'm just going to use some clear water to blend those colors together but using those different colors and making them blend together it just gives your your whatever you're painting a lot of life and a lot of color petals done all of your background and your center and most importantly your paper is dry okay so I'm gonna pull this one to the side I'm really liking how that goes that goes I'm gonna finish that up after class I'll post a picture when it's done okay um, <clears throat> so here I have one that's completely painted and I've already gone back over it with a pencil I like the look of the lines some people you might want to you can outline it with the pencil again you can use a waterproof marker like a sharpie um, but you'll just go back and outline it. And again, this is optional. I like it. It helped me cover up some mistakes. So if I had, if this was drier, well, I'm going to try it anyway. So if you see here, I have some blue that went into there. But if I make a line like this, if I outline it, you almost barely see it, right? I want you guys to be happy with what you have. You can hide mistakes. No one's going to notice the mistakes. Only you. Love your piece. That's what's important. All right? So you can kind of tell what it'll look like when it's all traced out. So I hope you guys were inspired to do some amazing things today. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you had fun. Um, <clears throat> let's do one more quick shout out to our sponsors. Where's my awesome sponsor sheet? I just had it. <laughs> Hold on, guys. One yeah. shout out to our amazing sponsors. Um, thank you again for making this happen. Make sure, okay, so you guys did hear Miss Tisha when she talked about our YouTube channel. Jump over there. Um, you can watch any of our videos from any time. Um, the we have the Ziegler Art Museum. Um, in the Do you search show bar. This? Yeah, go ahead okay. and show that. So they, they know what they're looking for. So this is what it'll pop up and look like. Okay, so you look for Ziegler Art Museum. And here we just have, this is the first one we did a couple weeks ago. The Movement in Art. Um, and let me just make sure I got done with everything. We talked about the drawing. Don't forget to get, um, to get put into our drawing. That happens on Monday at 2 o'clock. We'll go live and draw a name for you. Um, remember, we'll be here every Thursday. Um, at two o'clock, sometimes we'll do a one o'clock um, show also for our younger kids. And if, if you guys have any questions, any comments at all, just let us know and you guys share your pieces with us. I can't wait to see them. Well, and before we're done, uh -huh. let's, just, let's just give us a little brag for just a second. And show them Bailey. <laughs> show them Bailey's painting as she has been monitoring our Facebook and painting along with you, Miss Jessica. <laughs> yes. Um, here we go. Let's just, just brag on her a little bit there. More than a little bit. So, yeah. Bailey is our newest um, team member, okay? 
and we absolutely adore her stuff. When she first <laughs> came to us, she showed us her portfolio, and we just you know, about died. I just love it. Look at, just look at what she did. I mean, just absolutely amazing, and just by colors and waters. So oh. I love it. Good job, Thank Bailey. You. Very good. I really like to. I, I really like how you can along. see the difference between how you follow along and how you do as a beginner and then what it can really grow into to be yeah um and how more comfortable simple, you are right and even a simple art along for someone with experience can just help to that's right that's to right. move them forward all, all right, right. Do you need i hope you guys had a great time we certainly did we'll see you again um mm -hmm. monday for the drawing uh look out for next week when our um Oh, and then you look, go back to mine. <laughs> Which is absolutely beautiful. Everyone's art is beautiful. So um, join us next week where we, our spotlight will be um, clam diggers. So I'm really excited. I love that piece. So um, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us and keep creating. Bye. Bye.